Time now for the CBS3 Pet Project with animal advocate Carol Erickson, the PSPCA, and one of my favorites, Marvin, <laughs> looking spectacular in his Easter best. Yes, he's, uh, he's quite rabbit-like today. So yes, I brought Marvin, who I think by now everybody knows I adopted from this show back uh, a year ago in November. He's just been the greatest addition to my life that I can possibly imagine, and that's the beauty of adopting. And he came from the Pennsylvania SPCA. And today, what we want to talk about is traveling with your pet. Now, now, uh, we've heard about all the disasters, but people do have to go places. Sure. I was just recently on a trip. It, it kills me to be away from my animals, mm -hmm. but I really get very serious long before the trip about who's watching, can I trust them, et cetera, et cetera. Let me show you some video that I shot. This was on a layover in Detroit, and I just happened to pull out my iPhone and go, wow, there are certainly <laughs> a lot of dogs here in the airport. All of these dogs were going to be riding in the cabin of whatever flight they were going to be going on. So that is something that is done increasingly. But that said, I think that everybody has heard a lot about and needs to hear a lot about the dog, the 10 month old puppy that the uh, flight attendant said, put that thing in the overhead bin or words to that effect and that dog died. That was an unbelievable example of, of something that should absolutely never ever happen. And what I wanna underscore is wherever you are, you speak up for your pet. You never let anybody put them in a bad situation. That dog, also on a United flight, ended up in Japan instead of Kansas City. So things can happen, finally reunited with the owner, so that was a happier ending. But there are, you know, it's rare, but there are about one out of every 4,500 air transportations where the animal does die. Now, some of the things that you need to remember, if you're going to be transporting your pet with an, in an airplane, put them in a large enough crate. Apparently some of these deaths that happen on the airplanes are because the animals are in the cargo hold and they're in an unfamiliar crate. They're in a too small crate or something like that. Get that animal acclimated to that crate ahead of time. Pre-existing conditions, you need to know about that. Maybe you're gonna end up having to drive that animal. It may just be the safest thing for your entire family. So just really think about all of that and a direct flight. Don't have any layovers. You just magnify the amount of problems that you're going to end up having. Now, I know, what do you do with your cat? Well, you just kind of have to know if your animal is good traveling, right? So I think Riley just doesn't like traveling. So my mom will often come and stay with him if we are going to be gone for an extended period of time. I just don't like to leave him for a long time. And, and that's ideal. If you can have a trusted person, I always say trust, but verify. I want to see a picture. I want to know. I'm going to call. You at the house? Let me hear the dog, you know, like bark or do something. I want to know. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. Your, little, your little ears fell off, honey. I want to know that the dog is there, that the cat is there, that the pet sitter actually did show up. And they have organizations. Pet Sitters International is one where you can get bonded, wow. insured people, people with a track record. Have them meet your pet before you go. Have them come over a couple of times. Your expectations. Maybe you go, you know, this dog is kind of an escape artist, even out of a leash or a harness. That's when you say, you know what, maybe just yard walks or you really double up on the tags and the harnesses and that sort of thing. Because next week we're going to have on somebody who was boarding their dog and that dog took off from a boarding facility for 11 days. You can't imagine what this, uh, mm -hmm. this young girl went through to get oh, this yeah. dog back, which she did, but she's going to be back here next week telling us a lot of the tips uh, oh, wow. that you need to know. Let me show you a couple of the adoptable animals at the Pennsylvania <laughs> SPCA. This is Mama, poor sweet Mama. Her owners were moving, so they turned her into the shelter. She is seven years old, house trained, crate trained. She is wonderful. Big, big girl, love that dog. And Criss Cross and Henry, they are two male cats and they were rescued by the oh. Humane Law Enforcement team. One of the cats, Criss Cross, has crossed eyes. They're about eight years old. They're very friendly. They need to be adopted together. Mm -hmm. They're very bonded and they are best in an adult home only. So if you're going to be traveling, just pay attention. Yeah. It's Easter, obviously. Mm -hmm. Watch out for the chocolate, the, the, oh, the yes. phony grass, that sort of yes. thing. These animals, they, the little phony eggs, they can ingest them and create right. a problem. The more you know, Carol, yes. the better you can keep your, yep. your free friends safe. Yes. And remember to adopt to any pet. Just visit the PSPCA, 350 Erie Avenue. That's the headquarters there, Saturday, Sunday, 10 to 5, Monday through Friday, 1 to 8. And a reminder, they are closed today for Easter. Yes, but find the love of your life there, as I did mm -hmm. with young Marvin here. And take here. care of them. Yes, Thanks, absolutely. Carol. Marvin's always a joy. And Thanks, safe buddy. travels with you and your pets absolutely. if you're going someplace. Thanks, Carol.
Remember, of course, to tune in next week for the CBS3 Pet Project. But coming up, that's it for us here at 7 o'clock. Here's what we have coming up for you at 8.